Hi, my name is Dr. Tishan, and in this video I'd like to look at a graphic representation of finding limits. You probably studied limits in a pre-calculus class or a calculus one class. Let's take a look at the graph on the board behind me here. It is a function, y equals f of x. We have a function with some holes and points of discontinuity, but that's okay. But let's take a look at some different representations of limits and function values here. Starting with letter A. Letter A, we want to know what the function value is at negative 2. We're going to start right here with function value. Now the function value, basically what's happening with function value, when you see this notation, the number in the parentheses, they're telling you the x-coordinate and you want to give them the y. And you've seen this notation, y equals f of x. This is writing your y in terms of function notation. Anytime they're asking you to evaluate a function in the parentheses, they're basically telling you the x-coordinate, and then you, in turn, have to give the y-coordinate. So f of negative 2, we're going to start right here. In other words, on our graph, on this graph, we want to go to where the x, along the x-axis, where x is negative 2. When x is negative 2, we want to give the corresponding, the y-coordinate. So you go up, go up and look, and you have an open and closed circle. The closed circle is the defined value. So the defined value here, we're going to go across, and so f of negative 2, in other words, when x is negative 2, what is the y-coordinate? The y-coordinate would be a positive 2. So f of negative 2 is positive 2. All right, and that's how you would read function values off of a graph. They give you the x, and you're telling them the y. Now, limits, with limits, okay, the notation here, this is a one-sided limit. This is the limit as x approaches negative 2, and the superscript of a plus sign after the negative 2 means from the right, okay? And then the limit as x approaches negative 2, the superscript minus sign after the number means from the left. So here's the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. We're going to take care a look at and we're going to take a look at the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left. Now let's start with from the right. The limit as x approaches negative 2. Limits with limits, they differ from function values because function value is going to give you the x and you tell them what the y is. But with limits, we're going to approach from the right and approach from the left. We're going to go to where x is negative 2, but we're going to go just to the right of negative 2 to the graph. And as we approach from the right, as we approach from the right, we want to see where the y values appear to be going. So you're reading limits just like you read function values off the y-axis, you're going to read limits off the y-axis as well. So as we approach negative 2 from the right, where does it appear the y-coordinates are going? It appears the y's are going to 1 from the right, because that's where the, the open circle is. So it appears from the right the y's are going to 1. What about the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left? The limit is x, so we go to negative 2, jump to the left, and negative 2 on the graph. And as we approach negative 2 from the left, where do the y's appear to be going? From the left, it appears the y's are going to positive 2. So with limits, it's about where you're, where you're approaching. As you approach your value from the left and the right, we want to know where the y-coordinates are going as you approach. Function value and limits, the way they differ, your function value, when x is negative 2, we want to know what y is. We want to know what's happening right at that number. Okay. However, with limits, we don't ever have to get to negative 2. As you approach negative 2 from the right and from the left, we want to know where the y-coordinates appear to be going. So as we approach from the right, y's are going to 1. As we approach from the left, the y's are going to 2. So now what is the limit as x approaches negative 2 of our function? Well, in order for the limit to exist, the left and the right the values from the left and the right have to be the same. All right, since the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right is 1, and the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left is 2, and these values are not the same, then we say that this limit does not exist. This limit does not exist. In order for a limit to exist, you have to approach the same value from the left and from the right. Otherwise, the limit's not going to exist. So here is example A. Let's take a look at example B. So now example B, first we want to start with what is the function value at 0. In other words, when x is 0 on our graph, we want to tell them what the y-coordinate is. When the x is 0 on the graph, what's the y-coordinate? And if you look here, there's an open circle, but there's no closed defined circle here. So what about the y-coordinate at x equals 0? It's not defined. We do not have a defined y-coordinate. So I'm going to write not defined 
because we don't have a corresponding y coordinate to where x is zero. Now let's talk about the limits though. The limit as x approaches zero from the right, so you just go to the right of zero as you approach as the x's approach zero from the right, where does it appear that the y's are going? It appears the y coordinates are going to one from the right. What about from the left? As the x's approach zero from the left, where does it appear the y coordinates are going? Well, it appears they're going to one also, okay? So we don't have a defined closed in circle at x equals zero. We don't have a defined function value. However, as we approach zero, as the x's approach zero from the right, from the left, the y's clearly from both ways look, look to be going to one. So we do have a limit since the right and the left side both are one, then the limit as x approaches zero is going to be one. The limit exists because the one-sided limits are the same number. So this is what our limit is. So let's take, take a look at example C. Example C, we want the function value at one. In other words, when x is one, what is y? When x is one, y coordinate, well, here it is. When x is one, the y coordinate right there is two. F of one is two. When x is one, y is two. That's the point point on the graph. What about limits? Remember, limits, we don't ever have to get to that point as your approach from the left and the right. Limit as x approaches one, so we just go just to the right of one. As we approach one from the right, where does it appear the y's are going? They're also going to two. What about the limit as x approaches one from the left? As we approach one from the left, where does it appear that the y coordinates are going? They're also going to two. So do we have a limit as x approaches one? Yes, because as we approach one, as the x's approach one from the right and from the left, both sides, the x coordinates are going to two. So we have a limit. We have a limit and the limit is two. And finally, let's take a look at our uh, example D. We want to take a look at what's happening at x equals 2. So at x equals 2, um, let's start with f of 2. When x is 2, what is y? So we go to 2. We're going to look, and there's no... There's no closed circle, okay? So where is the y value defined? It isn't defined. We have no defined y value. We have open circles, no defined y value. So I'm going to just write not, it's not defined. Our f of 2 is not defined. We don't have a, a y coordinate, okay? Now, the limit as x approaches 2, here's where x equals 2, you're going to just jump to the right of 2 on the graph. As the x is approached 2 from the right, where does it appear that the y coordinates are going? As the x approaches 2 from the right side, the y's are going to 2. You can look on the you follow across to the y-axis, the y's are going to 2. Okay. What about the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? All right, so jump to the left of 2, and as the x values approach 2 from the left, where does it appear the y's are going? Here, this way, it looks like the y's are going to 3. So the limit, remember, we don't have to get to x equals 2. We want the limit as x, e x approaches 2, and remember with limits, it's about where it's, you're approaching from the left and from the right. As x approaches 2 from the right, the y's are going to 2, but as the x's approach 2 from the left, the y's are going to 3. Functions going to, function values are going to 2 from the right, 3 from the left. So what is the limit? Well, because the right and the left limits do not agree, they're not the same number, we have to say that the limit does not exist. I'll write D and E for short, the limit does not exist. So the, these are your examples and you be careful you want to be careful when you're when you're evaluating limits you want to be careful not to make any sort of generalizations um, because sometimes you can see the examples here sometimes you do have a function value that exists but maybe the limit doesn't exist and sometimes maybe you don't have a defined function value but you do have a limit sometimes you have a function value and a limit both exist Right, and sometimes you don't have a function value, you don't have a limit. So every situation is unique in its own way. You just need to um, just need to look at every situation on a graph and, and analyze it. Um, so anyways, just to recap really quick, okay, so function values, function values, they ask you for a function value, they are telling you the x, you're going to give them the y coordinate, that's how function values work. However, with limits, limits, it's not about what's happening at that x coordinate. With limits, it's, it's about what's happening as you approach from the left and you approach from the right. As you approach from both sides, if both sides are going the same place, and you never have to get there, but if both sides of your function are go going to the same place, then your limit exists. Um, 
if they don't, if they're not going the same place, you would say the limit does not exist. So I hope this helps with your uh, graphic representation of limits. Um, if these videos do help you at all, please subscribe. Please like them and subscribe to them if, um, if that works for you. I would appreciate that. And thank you for watching. I will be back to talk about analytic representation of, uh, of limits in the next video. Thank you.